In this video, we try to get a deeper understanding of p-values, the significance level alpha, and the t-statistics, and how these are related. Note that I assume that you are familiar with the t-distribution and the central limit theorem. If not, watch these videos first. To get the idea behind p-values, we must first understand why p-values from statistical tests based on a true null hypothesis have a uniform distribution. Whereas p-values from tests that are based on a false null hypothesis have a skewed distribution. To understand the difference between a true and a false null hypothesis, let's use the same example as we discussed in the video about type 1 and 2 errors. In this example, the mean body heights of people living in population A and B are exactly the same. We therefore know that the following null hypothesis is true since the mean body height in population A is equal to the mean body height in population B. Suppose that we would take a sample of four random individuals from each population. Based on the sample data, we use an unpaired t-test to compute the p-value. We can use the following formula to calculate the t-statistic when the two groups have an equal sample size. We see that the t-statistic is equal to about 0.26. To compute the p-value, we use a t-distribution with 6 degrees of freedom since the total sample size was 8, and we estimated two means. The p-value for a two-sided test corresponds to the area to the right-hand side of 0.26, and to the left-hand side of negative 0.26. By using a software, we can calculate the area of these two tails to about 0.8 which represents our p-value. Since this p-value is greater than the general significance level of 0.05, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Since we know that the two populations in this example have equal means, we know that we have made the correct decision. Let's pick four new random individuals from the two populations again. However, this time we happen to pick four individuals from population A that were relatively tall and four individuals from population B that were relatively short. The t-statistic is now calculated to 3.81. The p-value is therefore the area to the left-hand side of negative 3.81 and to the right-hand side of positive 3.81 in the t-distribution with 60 years of freedom. Since the p-value in this case happened to be less than 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. Note that, since we know that the two populations have equal means, we know that we have incorrectly rejected a true null hypothesis. We have therefore committed a so-called type 1 error. If we continue this process 10,000 times, we'll get 10,000 p-values and 10,000 t-statistics. For example, these two p-values come from our previous two examples whereas this is the last p-value out of all 10,000 t-tests. If you make a histogram of all the 10,000 t-statistics, we see that they follow a t-distribution with 6 degrees of freedom, just as we would expect. However, when we make a histogram of the 10,000 p-values, the p-values seem to follow a uniform distribution. So, why is this the case? By using a software or t-table, we know that the area to the left-hand side of negative 2.45 and to the right-hand side of positive 2.45 covers about 5% of the t-distribution with 6 degrees of freedom. This means that we expect that 5% of the t-statistics are either smaller than negative 2.45 or larger than positive 2.45 due to chance when the null hypothesis is true. In our example, 521 t-statistics happen to be greater than 2.45 or less than negative 2.45, which will result in 521 p-values that are less than 0 0.05. This represents approximately 5% of the 10,000 p-values. We therefore expect that 5% of these p-values are in the range between 0 and 0 0.05 when the null hypothesis is true. 
Let's move the critical values to negative 1.94 and to positive 1.94 so that we now cover 5% of each tail or 10% of the total area. The t statistics in these two tails will therefore result in p values that are less than 0 0.1. The t statistics between negative 2.45 and negative 1.94 and between 1.94 and 2.45 will result in a p-value between 0.05 and 0.1. In this simulation, 485 t-statistics resulted in a p-value between 0.05 and 0.1, which approximately corresponds to the expected 5% of the t-statistics in these two ranges. We see that the next 5% of the area of the t-distribution includes about 492 t-statistics, which will result in 492 p-values between 0.1 and 0.15. And the next 5% of the area of the t-distribution includes about 520 t-statistics, which will result in 520 p-values between 0.15 and 0.2, and so forth. If we continue like this, we see that the p-values have a uniform distribution. This is because the intervals that cover an area of 5% in the t-distribution get smaller and smaller although the area stays the same. Which results in the fact that these intervals cover about the same number of t-statistics because the density of these values increases as we approach the mean. This is the reason why the p-values have a uniform distribution when the null hypothesis is true. The reason for transforming the t-statistics into p-values that have a uniform distribution is because we can now define the value of alpha, the significance level, which is the probability of rejecting a true null hypothesis. If we for example set alpha to 0.05, we know that if the null hypothesis is true, there is a 5% risk that we will be incorrectly rejected. In other words, there is a 5% risk that we commit a type 1 error if the null hypothesis is true. And if we set alpha to 0 0.1, there is a 10% risk that we will incorrectly reject a true null hypothesis. And if we set alpha to 0 0.15, there is a 15% risk that we will incorrectly reject a true null hypothesis, and so forth. The definition of alpha, which states the probability for rejecting a true null hypothesis, would not hold if the distribution of the p-values would not have a uniform distribution. A p-value can be defined as the probability of obtaining a test result, or a more extreme, given that the null hypothesis is true. Once we understand the underlying distribution of p-values and t-statistics, it is now a lot easier to understand this definition. Suppose that we have run a two-sided statistical test and have got a p-value of 0 0.14. This can be interpreted as the probability of observing the calculated test statistic or more extreme value being equal to 14%, given that another hypothesis is true. Note that the p-value is always based on the fact that the null hypothesis is true. We will now see why the p-values have a skewed distribution when the null hypothesis is false. In this example, the mean body height of people living in population A is 170, whereas the mean height of people living in population B is 155. We therefore know that the following null hypothesis is false, since the mean body height in population A is not equal to the mean body height in population B. However, let's take a sample of four random individuals from each population. Since there now is a big difference between the two population means, we expect a big difference between the sample means which will result in a t-statistic that is expected to be much greater than zero, or much smaller than zero if we swap the position of the mean values. Since we have a two-sided hypothesis in our example, 
It does not matter if the t-statistic is negative or positive because the p-value will be the same. The area to the left hand side are negative 5.09 and to the right hand side a positive 5.09 represents our p-value. The p-value for this example is here about 0 0.002. If you draw 10,000 samples from each population and compute 10,000 t-tests, we'll get 10,000 t-statistics and p-values. We expect that most of these p-values are quite small, since there now actually is a true difference in the mean body height between the two populations. However, it might happen that we pick four random individuals from population A that are relatively short, and four individuals from population B that are relatively tall, which will result in a relatively large p-value. If you use a significance level of 0 0.05, we would not reject the false null hypothesis and therefore commit a so-called type 2 error. If you make a histogram of all the 10,000 t-statistics, it will look something like this. Note that most t-statistics are greater than zero, since the first mean value is usually much greater than the second mean value in the 10,000 samples, since people in population A are generally taller than the ones in population B. Since the t-statistics to the right hand side of the mean value have large values, the distribution will be a bit skewed to the right because large values divided occasionally by a relatively small variance will be relatively large. If you now place a t-distribution below, which is the expected distribution according to null hypothesis, we see that a lot of t-statistics are now greater than positive 2.45, which is the cutoff value to the right hand side if you use a significance level of 0 0.05. In this example, there are about 4,300 t-statistics that are greater than 2.45, which results in about 4,300 p-values that are smaller than 0 0.05. If we reduce the significance level of 0 0.05, this means that we would reject 4,300 false null hypotheses out of the 10,000. If we move to the center of the t-distribution, 5% of the area now includes fewer t-statistics because the t-statistics are no longer centered around zero. We continue to move to the center where we cover 5% of the distribution in each step. If we continue like this, we see why the p-values have a skewed distribution when the null hypothesis is false. Note that in this example, about 5,700 p-values were greater than 0 0.05, which means that we have made 5,700 type 2 errors, because we know that the null hypothesis is false for all the 10,000 t-tests. This was the end of this video. Thanks for watching.